A very good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to HYCM's online trading workshop with myself, Giles Cox, and a very warm welcome. I'm glad you could join us again. We will, of course, today be getting ready for the FOMC rate decision, an absolutely crucial uh, meeting. And one of the things we have to be aware is just as the US dollar is king of currencies, uh, so too is the Federal Reserve the figurative king of central banks. So where the Federal Reserve go, uh, the rest of the world literally follows. So it's impossible to really underestimate the importance of the Federal Reserve meeting. And of course, markets are tentative and in a jittery mood ahead of the decision because it's likely to impact future direction of a number of different assets. We will cover that uh, shortly so that we're all completely prepared for the event. Now, don't forget, as we talk about different entries, exits, the whole purpose of this workshop, it's not a signal trading service where, um, you you know, I tell you what to buy and what to sell. Instead, this is an education service. You look over my shoulder, someone with a professional trading background, and you see how I go about making decisions. And over time, you will find yourself making very similar decisions as that learning uh, process becomes easier and easier. So don't forget that is um, the, how the system works. And over time, you know, the regulars here understand this and, and they're uh, they've been developing their own uh, trading skills um, over the months uh, and, and years that I've been doing this webinar. So very warm welcome to you. Don't forget we have a question and answer passion, uh, passage. Yes, good afternoon, Ibrahim, good to see you. John, Johan, good to see you. Rodrigo, Mohammed, Warren, Manuel, Jabin, excellent. Good, good to see some uh, good familiar faces here again. And uh, really looking forward to the session and uh, we'll get ourselves totally ready for a significant event. Now, for those of you who are perhaps joining the webinar for the first time, and it never harms uh, to remind ourselves, us regulars and something I remind myself of regularly, remember when we're trading, we're wanting to trade strength against weakness. Just in this arm, you'd expect a strong arm to beat the relatively weaker arm. In exactly the same way, we'd expect a strong currency to beat a weaker currency. Strength against weakness is the key principle of trading. As we start this week, it's worth just reminding ourselves that the market has been in a very risk off mood. We've been seeing equities selling. Now, particularly we've seen Chinese equities selling. That's been on the news that China has been threatening to intervene with some of its domestic companies. It started off with mentions of intervention to some education companies that potentially might, might no longer be for profit companies and might become not for profit organizations. That resulted in some heavy selling in Chinese equity markets. Um, and we saw uh, that impact um, the wider um, global uh, stock indices on that news. We also saw some strength in safe haven currencies. Remember, the safe havens are the yen and the Swiss franc. Whenever markets are worried, the yen and the Swiss franc gain, and sometimes the US dollar. And uh, you need to have that relationship in your mind. But when markets are scared, the yen, the Swiss franc gain, and also sometimes the US dollar. We've also been seeing weakness in the high beta currencies, Aussie, CAN, New Zealand dollars. Whenever the market is worried, you tend to see weakness in those high betas, and also weakness in commodities, oil, copper, iron ore, etc. And then you also see bids into bonds. So that's when a bond yields move low. So that's how we've started the week. Now we have the FOMC interest rate decision. And this is where the sentiment could shift. It could be the turning point and crossroads uh, for the week. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through a few different currencies which look like they have some uh, diverging outlooks uh, with uh, different central bank uh, actions. And then we're also going to look at the FOMC rate decision. So I'm going to do a bit of a sort of a masterclass in recognizing strength against weakness. And that should help really firm up not only some potential trading opportunities in our mind, uh, but also should firm up the uh, F what to do for the FOMC rate decision. So first of all, we'll just go over to screen three. That's great. And we'll look at the major currency pairs. So 
here's the first thing to look at. We see the major currency pairs, we see the dollar weakening a little bit, strengthening a little bit, pretty flat. No major drivers of the dollar so far this week. Now, if you look at the, the major currency pairs, the two opportunities that I see in these two pairs, there's potentially three, okay? So the first opportunity is potentially in the US dollar CAD, and it is if we see a dovish Federal Reserve. So if the Federal Reserve are dovish tonight, so if Jerome Powell says we haven't made substantial further progress, inflation is transitory, if he says, you know, we, 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 we're not ready to start tapering bond purchases yet, then that would be a dovish outlook, and you'd expect to see some weakness in the US dollar CAD, and I'd expect to see a drop down to that 1.2400 region. That's the first thing to look at. The other way to look at is if the Fed is dovish, look for upside in the pound and the New Zealand US dollar. The, the, the pair that I really like on a, on a dovish Fed is the New Zealand US dollar. Now, the New Zealand dollar has reasons for strength. The last inflation data out of New Zealand was 3.3% year on year, the highest reading in 19 quarters. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand's stated inflation target rate is 1% to 3%. And remember, this is important, pretty much the only tool the central bank has to control rising inflation is increasing interest rates. So after that very high inflation data and the last central bank meeting from the RBNZ saw the RBNZ talk about tapering bond purchases. So they were going to end their bond purchase program, which has now finished on the 23rd of July. This has led all the four largest investment banks in New Zealand to talk about the RBNZ raising interest rates next month. So when you consider that the RBNZ is due to raise interest rates next month and the US Fed is expected to raise interest rates, what, 2024, there's a clear up bias divergence here. Now, if you look here, this is the bond yield spread and the bond yield spread is a good proxy for risk. And let's just uh, look at this more easily, see if this is a right. And you see, basically, you tend to see price track the bond yield spread. And at the moment, we've got a bit of a divergence with price moving lower, but the bond yield spread sort of staying flat to, to moving higher. Now, that means that we typically expect some upside in the New Zealand US dollar pair. Now, if we see a dovish Fed, this pair should gain. And my trigger entry would be a break of this trend line to the upside. Just very simply, I go at market and then I go with the break of the trend line. As long as you stay above the trend line, keep with the trade. If it goes back below the trend line, I ditch the trade. But that is only if the Fed is dovish tonight. But that's definitely a key one. Pound US dollar also has some upside uh, potential here because the UK economy has seen a couple of central bank speakers turn more hawkish. We've had Bank, bank of England Saunders and expectations are rising that when the Bank of England meet next week, that they might be more hawkish. So if they start announcing bond tapering and the UK economy obviously is opening up, there's a drop in COVID-19 cases uh, here in the UK, six days in a row, cases are falling, hospitalizations and deaths are well under control and uh, the outlook for the UK economy looks strong. As a consequence, if we see a dovish Fed, expect this resistance to break and up to a retest of 1.400 on a dovish Federal Reserve. That's another one to look at. I will get into the details of a dovish uh, FOMC um, at the, during this webinar, so don't worry, I'll give you the specifics what we're looking for. But for now, a dovish Fed gives good upside potential for US dollar CAD, pound US dollar, and New Zealand US dollar. So upside for the pound, upside for the New Zealand dollar, uh, weakness for US dollar CAD. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, now let's go to gold. Now, this for me is the best opportunity that I see for a dovish Fed. Can you see the way that gold has been captured by that trend line on the daily chart? Now, if the Fed are dovish, I'm looking for a break of this trend line and then a first move up to 1830, next to 1860, and next to 1900. 
Now, let me show you something. Let me show you what's been going on with gold, and you'll understand uh, the movers of gold after looking at this. Now, gold is being pushed and pulled around by three things. Real yields, which is in the red, um, gold, which is in the blue, and the dollar, which is in the purple. Okay, but I'm just going to show you what happens with gold. When real yields fall, gold rises. Okay, falling real yields, rising gold. So you see, falling real yields, December turn of the year, rising gold. Falling real yields, rising gold. We now see real yields falling faster than they've fallen before. Can you see that? But what do you notice? You notice that gold is not moving as high as it did in November through to January of the turn of the year and April through to June. In both of these times, gold was up around that 1900 region. But now gold is flat around that 1800 region, but real yields are falling lower. What's going on? Well, the difference between this time and these two times is the dollar. You see here, as the dollar is the purple line, as real yields was falling, the dollar was falling. As real yields were falling, the dollar was falling. But now, as real yields are falling, the dollar is rising. Now, why is that? The very simple reason, the dollar is rising at the moment because at, on 15th of June, there was the dot plot shift from the last FOMC rate decision. And that resulted in a lot of dollar strength. So the dollar strength in the market needs to tail off for gold to catch a deeper bid. So if the Fed are dovish tonight, expect gold to see some good upside. Uh, and that for me is the best potential looking trade. And if we just go back to the chart, from a break of that trend line. So if the Fed are dovish, I'll show you what to look for exactly shortly. Then go with the break of the trend line to the upside. OK, that's what I'll be looking for. Go, Stay above, stay with it, get back below, clear the trade out. So very low risk, um, potentially high reward. And when you have strong fundamentals, now this was a trade that I was talking about recently. I may have mentioned it here. I've certainly mentioned it in some of the groups I, I've been in. We had this trend line break on Bitcoin after we saw Bitcoin starting to see buyers develop with the with Bitcoin whales, so-called whales are people who hold between 1,000 and like 100,000 or 10,000 Bitcoins. Um, they were building, we then had the news that Amazon was expected to accept crypto payments. Do you see how that trend line just broke higher? So when you have the fundamentals, and the technicals all lining up together, like here, we've got one, two, three touches of that trend line. That is a valid trend line. A dovish Fed, expect that to break and the break to hold. So very nice setup there, potentially in gold, one to look for. Crude prices. Now, what's going on with crude at the moment is we had that heavy selling on the risk off trading. Um, and on the news that OPEC Plus is going to tail back production cuts next year. So oil is much more balanced as a market now. Um, we have seen that OPEC are going to just tail back their production cuts next year. So for me, like, I see this as a, as a near-term top in oil at the moment. And we have in, in oil inventory data out later. And if we see oil a draw of like over six million barrels per day that should be supported for oil but if the draw is only like one and a half million barrels per day or even a positive build expect that to weigh on oil prices i'm not trading oil today because it's just so tied up with the dollar and the federal reserve risk that uh, oil i'm just going to leave and also oil markets have become a little bit um trickier to manage now i did mention about this 68 region being a good medium term area to buy oil. So if you have bought in oil, I would uh, be looking at potentially taking profit at these levels. Do you see this uh, trend line here? This key trend line broken, now it's retested. So there's either a potential to go short, stops just above the high. I wouldn't do that, but technically there's a potential area there. That's not for me. Um, but you can see if you have been long on that break, that's the ideal place to take profit in oil. 
Uh, similarly, the other pair we mentioned last week is the pound Australian dollar. Now, this is a great example. This is a trade that I first flagged up around early July on my blog. Uh, I don't, uh, quite a few of you have been, probably been following this, I've been speaking about it a lot. But there was a diverging outlook between the UK and Australia. UK doing fantastic, uh, the economy picking up, the uh, vaccination program going very well, uh, the expectations of Bank of England tapering. Australia, the Delta variant rising, only 15% of the population double vaccinated. There was a clear diverging outlook between the UK and Australia. And you can just see here with a very nice trade, sort of a nice 500 point plus trade um, outlook on this. So you can see from around this July um, time. And if you just, uh, I'll just show you here on my blog, this really, um, you know, this really highlights this, remember this principle of strength against weakness. So you can see here, like going in from like, 5th of July, just explain that out that, that outlook, that nice potential trade setting up is the UK looks like coming out of restrictions, Australia is heading back into restrictions. Uh, and then just seeing there, entering on a break of that trend line, stops nice and tight, looking for a move higher. So you can see, if I just, you can see here, looking for that break there on the, what chart was I, on the monthly chart and just going for a break of that trend line and you can see here that that trend line broke very very nicely you see that trend line there marked in and you've got a clear trend line break see and it's moved up very very nicely if you are still long pound australian dollar uh, i think there's still room uh, to go and just move your stops up to 1.8790 okay just underneath that resistance level uh, that's the area to take profit uh, to, to to move the stops up to now i've taken profit on my position and i've closed out i'm happy with that sort of around three percent on the account so yeah very good nice little simple setup very uh, easy and uh cool please excuse me um, and and that goes goes to illustrate well that uh, difference between uh, the uk and uh, australia now similar trade setup uh, that's um, just emerging is here in the pound yen. Now, the Japanese yen is a very dovish central bank. Now, the reason we've been seeing some yen strength this week is because that risk off trading. So, the risk to this trade is that we see further risk off trading, but there is potential to buy at market here. And the UK uh, Bank of England is meeting next week, and expectations, um, let me just show, just show you here. Uh, you see here, Thursday, August 5th, we've got um, Bank of England uh, monetary policy uh, meeting. So going into that, expecting to find some pound buyers. Now, what you can see here is a hidden bullish divergence. You can see here that the indicator is making lower lows. If this, this green line crosses the red line, that really opens up the bullish divergence. The fundamentals are good. Japanese yen should be weak. If we see a dovish Fed, this should soar higher. And um, one potential, if you're not long and wanted to go long on this, is to go long at market or go long on a dovish Fed. Stops just running below that 147 region, then looking for a break of that trend line, and ultimately I'm looking up for 160. So I'm looking for a move back up into this area here. Now, you can see here that it's a break of this trend line. That could really open up ways. And you see this trend line here, this is a weekly chart. Look, this trend line goes back from 2007, 2015, recently May this year, like ripping through there would be a fantastically bullish signal. So the other option is if you just want to be more conservative, go with a break. If you stay above the trend line, stay with it, get back below, ditch it. The risk with trading the pound against the yen is that the yen will see risk off flows and strength, right? So you have to watch out for that. But I am long pound yen. I'm also long New Zealand dollar yen. I'll show you the setup. Uh, now I've been long New Zealand dollar yen. I've got I've got a few positions here because I really like this trade. 
I was buying into it as it fell into this support level. So I've been buying in from about 75, 50 and below. Um, got some you know, pretty decent fills. Uh, and you, what you can see here, this is an, a false inside bar break. Now that is suitable for me for, for buying at market. Now remember what I'm saying, the strength against the weakness. Remember this principle, so let me show you. This is the principle I'm talking about. Strength against weakness, yeah? So the New Zealand dollar, interest rates are expected to rise next month. Strength. The yen, now, the yen is showing some strength, but that's only on the risk off trading. So what would invalidate this trade is say the Fed are hawkish later, then we'd see some equity selling, we might see some risk off panic. And if we did, we'd see the yen likely drop lower. Uh, the yen would move higher rather than New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen would drop lower. So that's the risk. However, I like that. I think buying that at market is a great opportunity because you can have a risk reward of about three to one. And your first profit area is that 79 region. So this is a fantastic looking trade. We've got a bullish RBNZ, a very dovish Bank of Japan. Anytime you want to know what's going on with central banks, just go onto my blog and you can see at any time what's going on with um, central banks. And you can see here Bank of Japan, the last central bank decision they met, they kept the dovish script but Japanese yen rises on safe haven flows, right? So that would be the problem. The Bank of China are dovish, but the yen be rising on the safe haven flows. That sums it up, and you can read the information there. Just go onto my blog, and you know some of the material I put up here is really, you know, very, very useful. Um, you know, so you know, don't miss out is what I'm trying to say, uh, and it, and it really does sort of. Have, help people navigate through these uh, tricky uh, waters. So there we go, that's back into that support area. Not surprising that we're seeing, we can see some, you know, buying levels off that support. Uh, and another good example of a potential trade. And technically, you can see a false break of an inside bar. Technically, that's very strong. Just like here, do you see, we have this, uh, Inside bar, false break, price higher. Inside bar, false break, price higher, right? Inside bar, false break, move higher. So even here, like inside bar, false break, move lower. Inside bar, false break, with expect price to move higher. Let's just, I'm gonna see if there's anything else to really draw out for us. Uh, yeah. Um, we'll start looking at it. Now, the VIX is dropping lower. We have seen, if we just take a look at this in the daily chart, we've seen some selling in equity markets. Now, the way uh, some analysts have been talking is you think it's the end of the world. We've seen a minor pullback in stocks. And a pullback is to be expected, but it has been on that worry over Chinese equity markets. So, you know, that, that remains a little bit of a concern. Um, in terms of what we can expect for equity markets, it's always going to depend on what the Fed's saying. Now, I like the FTSE 100. I really do like this. If you look on the weekly chart, if we get a dovish Fed, you see here, now this is a pin bar. Do you see how the body of the pin bar is within the body of the previous candle? You would expect to see higher prices and if the fed is dovish expect buying at market up to 7150 then to 7200 that is a very clear buy signal in the FTSE 100 technically all we need is a dovish fed now the reason a dovish fed will help uh, equity markets is because if interest rates are increased that means companies debts are more if companies debts are more it means their future earnings are less which means stocks fall if there's no uh, move in interest rates, that keeps uh, companies' debt repayments low. It means equity markets can keep moving higher. So that's one to look for, the FTSE 100. Uh, VIX tracking lower at the moment. The VIX is going to be pushed and pulled around on the Fed as well. Hawkish Fed, expect the VIX to rise. Dovish Fed, expect the VIX to fall. Now, of course, this is what you want to know. 
what to look for. Now, this is uh, one of our partners, and um, I provide analysts, analysts every single day for Financial Source. Um, and I know many of you are on the uh, terminal here. Um, now, what we can expect is this. If the FOMC is hawkish, so these are things to look for. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this if you want to help you. If the bank is stressed about inflation, so you know how Fed's power has been saying how inflation is transitory. If he says no, it's not transitory, it's a problem. The only way, remember, they can impact uh, inflation is by raising interest rates. And before you raise interest rates, you've got to taper bond purchases. So if the, uh, the Fed says we, we started discussions about tapering and hints at tapering happen in August or September, if that's the case, then we could expect to see dollar upside and the key trade would be dollar yen buying. Okay. We'd also expect to see equity markets falling. That the, a hawkish Fed is likely to be the catalyst for a deeper stock correction. So I will be I will be closing my stock positions if this happens. Okay, because of the hawkish Fed. Gold selling would also make sense on the dollar strength, right? So there's a clear playbook. If it's balanced, it's much more okay. Just carry on as usual. Um, there's no, there's no real trade. If, if, if the Fed just says inflation's been faster, higher, but still transitory, if it says, you know, tapering discussions are ongoing, there's no hints about August or September. If it just says, yeah, progress has been made towards substantial further progress, but we're not there yet, uh, then just expect more balanced view. On balance, I'd expect equities to recover, but there's always that Chinese issue. So, uh, it's much more mixed on a balanced view. There isn't an obvious trade. Um, but maybe something like the New Zealand or Japanese yen offers value long. If then, but it's but you have to understand it's more balanced, you'd have to see. Now a dovish FOMC should be risk positive because that means that no interest rate hikes, easy money conditions continue, stock upside. Um, the only outside risk is that Chinese worries resume. But I'd expect to see some bullish equity buying in the near term. So the dovish outlook will be if the bank stresses that recent price pressures are transitory and just explains the recent virus escalations are expected to play greater downside pressure, maybe worries about China. Um, if they say that, um, you know, tapering um, expectations are far too aggressive right now. They're not thinking of tapering August and September. And if the Fed says, even though data has been better than expected, the path of substantial further progress is not only far away, but might be even out of reach for longer, then that would be a very clear gold buy. Okay. So in that instance, gold buying, FTSE 100 buying, New Zealand US dollar buying, New Zealand dollar yen, pound yen. All make sense okay as well as the other ones but they're the ones I like for me number one is gold 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 because then that would be the, the bit of the equation that's missing that would be the dollar selling and that should give gold a good boost higher okay the blue line and risk can be easily defined it's just a simple break there that trend line see what i mean so dovish fed just go at market getting as quick as possible that's what i'll be doing and then that trend line becomes your risk so you could probably even you know once you break through that you could move to break even because you're pretty safe below that level so it's very low risk right i hope you can see that okay folks that's it that is what to look for i've given lots of information Lots of potential uh, ideas. I hope that's helpful for folks. Uh, don't forget you can follow along with my blog. I will, of course, be talking about the Fed decision on my blog as well. So I will be going through what happens and how to make sense of the FRMC. I've also done a piece today about what to look for from the FRMC. So I will share that with you. Do give that a read. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. 
I'm at Giles Cochrane CCA. So that's my Twitter handle, at G Cochrane CCA. Uh, I'll just pop it in the feed here. And I do like, you know, give information out on my Twitter feed as well and try to keep folks updated with and what have you. Okay, folks. Bye, Brilliant. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, very nice to be with you all again. I uh, hope you uh, have a good trading. Oh, and I also, I do have another. I am speaking actually later on. Let me just, I'm just gonna move over to a different screen while I find this. I've got a link where I'm speaking. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, just here we go. I'm going to give you a link. Oh, here we go. Right. Yeah, this link here. I am speaking at 6.30 UK time on this blog, Modern, Modern Investing with Sasha. It is a uh, international broadcast media TV, so I will be there later. So if you're around uh, and want to chat with me then and just be part of everything, then do come along. I will be covering the FOMC event there, okay? So you follow it there at, on, the, on that YouTube uh, channel. So hopefully, that would be helpful. Okay, folks, take care. Have a very good rest of the afternoon and look forward to being in touch. Thanks now. Goodbye. You're welcome, Johan.